Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to have the opportunity to rise in the House today to speak about Bill 186, the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan Act, strengthening retirement security for Ontarians, 2016, which I introduced last week. Speaker, the introduction of this bill marks an important milestone for our government. I want to thank the staff from the Ministry of Finance and specifically the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan Implementation Secretariat for the tremendous work that they have done to make the ORPP a reality. I also want to thank the expert advisors who have assisted us as we develop this plan. Specifically, Michael Nobrega, former CEO of OMERS, David Dodge, former Governor of the Bank of Canada, and members of our technical advisory group on retirement security and members of our business implementation advisory group. Bill 186 brings us one step closer to achieving our goal that all eligible Ontarians are part of the ORPP or a comparable plan by 2020. Premier Wynn and this government has shown bold leadership to ensure that the people of this province retire with financial security. When the Premier appointed me the Associate Minister of Finance responsible for the ORPP, she gave me a very clear mandate to strengthen retirement security for Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, that's exactly what this legislation will help achieve. Mr. Speaker, we know that we have a retirement savings problem in this country and in this province. Study after study shows that too many Ontarians are not saving enough for retirement. Two-thirds of Ontario's workers do not participate in a workplace pension plan. That's over four million people, Mr. Speaker. And the proportion is even higher among young workers, aged 25 to 34, where about 75 percent do not participate in a workplace pension plan. Combine that with longer lifespans, lower personal savings, and an average CPP benefit of just over $6,900 per year. The result is a growing gap between what Ontarians need to save for a secure retirement and what they will actually have. Without immediate action, many of today's workers will likely see a drop in their standard of living in retirement. A future generation of seniors retiring with inadequate savings would place pressure on younger workers to support health care and other public services that retirees need. That's not good for people, that's not good for business, and that's not good for the economy. In the face of this pressing retirement savings challenge, our government is moving forward with the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan. The ORPP will help shrink the retirement savings gap by providing Ontario workers with a predictable stream of income paid for life. If passed, Bill 186 would enshrine the government's announced key design details for the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan in legislation. This would include details on the requirements for participation and contributions to the ORPP, benefit types and rules for compliance and enforcement. For example, as we have previously outlined, employers and employees will make equal contributions ensuring fairness. The ORPP will aim to replace 15% of an individual's pre-retirement earnings up to $90,000. Together with CPP, this will create a strong retirement income floor that people can rely on. Mr. Speaker, I want to emphasize again that these benefits will be indexed to inflation. The sustainability of the ORPP is critical to our government. Ontario has some of the strongest public sector pension plans in the world. As we've developed the ORPP, we've leveraged the expertise that these internationally recognized plans offer and modeled the ORPP on the best practices that they provide. To ensure that the ORPP is amongst the best performing plans and is sustainable for generations to come. Accordingly, the bill also includes clear rules related to plan funding to ensure that the ORPP is sustainable. In designing the ORPP, our government engaged with thousands of Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, last year I led an extensive consultation on key design features of the plan. 
I traveled to over 10 communities across the province and received over 1,000 written submissions. I heard from Ontarians in rural areas, our northern communities, and our biggest cities. Through this process, I spoke with employers, associations, labour groups, pension experts, retirees, and individuals and families. What I heard from those meetings was that people are concerned about their ability to save for retirement. They're also concerned about the next generation. They want to know that their children and grandchildren will be able to retire securely. What I also heard is that they want their government to show leadership on this issue. And that's why we're moving forward with this Made in Ontario plan. We know that the benefits of the ORPP will be far-reaching, both for individuals and for the economy. But we also know that employers and employees need time to prepare. In my consultations, what I heard from businesses is that they need time to plan and certainty. And that's exactly what this bill provides. Bill 186 is a critical step in our commitment to provide employers and employees with the clarity they need to prepare for the launch of the ORPP. It also reinforces our commitment to begin enrolling employers in the ORPP in January 2017 with contributions starting January 1, 2018. Mr. Speaker, the ORPP will improve the lives of Ontarians by ensuring that future retirees have the financial security that they deserve. I'd like to take the opportunity to highlight some of the key features of the legislation. Eligible employees working in Ontario or paid by an Ontario employer would be required to contribute to the ORPP. Employees would contribute 1.9% of their annual earnings between a minimum threshold of $3,500 and a maximum earnings threshold of $90,000 and their employer would match that contribution. This would apply to employees between the ages of 18 and 70 who are not members of a comparable workplace plan. In designing the ORPP, we heard from many employers about the generous workplace pension plans that they offer their employees. In many cases, these plans are already working well for some employees and employers. And that's why we created the concept of a comparable workplace pension plan, so that employers who offer their employees adequate pension coverage can continue to run their registered pension plans and not be required to contribute to the ORPP. Mr. Speaker, our government's vision of a comparable workplace pension plan is grounded in the principles of adequacy and targeted coverage. We worked with experts to ensure that our proposed thresholds for comparable plans would deliver pension coverage comparable to the ORPP. We looked at plans that had the lowest probability of individual members outliving their savings. The ORPP would include other provisions that mirror the CPP. First Nations employers and employees on reserve would have the option to opt in to the ORPP. At this time, self-employed individuals and federally regulated non-Crown employees would not be eligible to participate. However, we have included a provision to allow them to participate in future, depending on the discussions with the federal government. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to have the opportunity to discuss the benefits of the ORPP and what it would offer to Ontarians. The ORPP would offer two specific benefits, a pension benefit and a survivor benefit. To ensure that members maintain their purchasing power in retirement, benefits would be indexed to inflation. The ORPP pension benefit would target 15% of a member's pre-retirement earnings up to $90,000. ORPP benefits would be earned as contributions are made and the level of benefit would depend on the length of time an individual, an individual contributed to the plan and their salary during those years. The ORPP pension benefit would be available to members when they turn 65. However, adjusted benefits would be available as early as 60 and as late as 70 to provide members the flexibility they need as they approach retirement. 
the ORPP survivor benefit would be payable not just to a surviving spouse, but also to a member's designated beneficiary or estate if the member was single. This is an important improvement on what is provided by the CPP. As the ORPP is designed as a pension plan under the Income Tax Act, both employer and employee contributions would be tax deductible. Last year, our government passed the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan Administrative Corporation Act 2015 to create the ORPP Administrative Corporation. The ORPP AC is the independent arm's length entity which will be responsible for administering the pension plan and for managing the plan's investments for the benefit of plan beneficiaries. The ORPP is a plan for Ontarians and, and the sustainability of this plan is a core principle. Our government is con committed to ensuring the contributions that Ontarians make to the plan are there for them in retirement. A clear funding policy that would guide the actions of the ORPP Administrative Corporation and government in event of either a funding excess or, sh or shortfall is a critical feature of this legislation. Mr. Speaker, through a strong accountability and transparency framework, the Board of Directors and management team of the ORPP Administrative Corporation will be fully accountable to plan members. In turn, the ORPP AC would hold employers to account through a compliance and enforcement framework laid out in this legislation. Compliance and enforcement measures would include education to make sure that employers understand what is required of them. Let me be clear, ORPP contributions and revenues will not form part of the government's consolidated revenue funds. Instead, these funds would be held in trust by the ORPP Administrative Corporation for the benefit of the members of the plan. Mr. Speaker, I've spoken about some of the details of today's legislation, but I'd also like to talk about the bigger picture and how the ORPP would benefit Ontario's economy as a whole. Mr. Speaker, the, the Conference Board of Canada's cost-benefit analysis of the ORPP tabled last December confirms that both the economy and Ontarians would be better off with the ORPP. In the long term, it would be expected to add billions of dollars to the economy while providing a cost-effective means of helping individuals save for retirement. Mr. Speaker, today's legislation is another significant step in our journey towards ensuring that by 2020, all eligible Ontario workers would be covered by a comparable workplace plan or the ORPP. Previous governments in Canada and Ontario have taken courageous steps to build a strong retirement benefit foundation through the Canada Pension Plan, Old Age Security, and the Guaranteed Income Supplement and the Ontario Guaranteed Annual Income System, or GAINS. Today, the system needs to be improved for future generations. The province has long been a champion of strengthening the retirement income security system and is pleased that the federal government shares this commitment. Even as we introduce legislation on the ORPP, we are continuing to work collaborat collaboratively with the federal government, the provinces and territories to make progress on a CPP enhancement that addresses the needs of future retirees. But Mr. Speaker, we also know that we need to make progress now to ensure Ontarians can achieve the retirement security that they deserve. Last week, I was at Studio Y in Toronto to announce the introduction of the, this bill. Studio Y is a program to support young innovators. They are smart, diverse, big thinking problem solvers. I met one young person who builds robots to help clean up the shorelines in places where humans cannot go. 
I met another that has started a social enterprise that supports youth in creating art and music, promoting resilience in their lives and the lives of others. I met another young innovator whose passion is to advise and support students and youth groups to create real, tangible outcomes. All of these young people are poised and ready to do amazing things in this world and will have long and impactful careers. They are the leaders of today and tomorrow. They'll be innovating and flourishing in a different kind of economy from the one that their parents and grandparents worked in. One where there are fewer traditional workplace pension plans. It's a world where people are living longer and need their savings to go further in retirement. That's exactly why we are moving forward with this important piece of legislation. Mr. Speaker, it is critical for the future well-being of Ontarians and, the, and our economy that we take action now to ensure that future retirees, like the young people I met last week, can achieve financial security in retirement, regardless of where their careers take them. Mr. Speaker, the ORPP is an integral part of our government's economic plan to build Ontario up and to deliver on its number one priority to grow the Ontario's economy and to create jobs. Passing the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan Act 2016, strengthening retirement security for Ontarians, is an important step in modernizing the retirement income system in our province. I'm asking the members of this assembly to support this very important legislation. Bill 186 will ensure for future generations of retirees and for all working Ontarians that they have the retirement security that they need. Thank you, Speaker. Questions and comments?